to Teen Craft Night with Miss Amanda. Ashton. And Lena. We have a guest tonight, Elena Stuckel. Hello. Yay. She's here to craft with us, listen to the Rail on Montaigne station, and discuss our book that we had last week. Um, we would have the book out on the table, but there's no room because tonight's project is a big project. We have cigar boxes, and you guys want to show your paper? Mm -hmm. I have blue polka dots. I got a... They're like the watches. Seven that's seven hundred sixty, seven seventy, seven hundred eighty. These are scrapbooks. Scrapbooking paper. And that's what that Ashens looks like, and this is what Elena's looks like. Blue polka dots. And it's easy peasy because we are taking Hold up your uh, cigar boxes. They're all different kinds of sizes. If you call us up at the Wilmington Public Library, you can get a cigar box. And then we take the scrapbooking paper and we mod podge it on to the cigar box. And I didn't say mod podge. <laughs> so, there is a lot of tracing in this because you want to make sure that the paper fits just right and you can watch all of the struggle do that. <laughs> but so they're measure what they're doing right now is they're measuring out their paper. So when you call us up at the Wilmington Public Library you will get a cigar box and scrapbooking paper. You take the scrapbooking paper and you put it upside down to where you see the white part and you trace with a pencil so you can cut it out. And after when you're done cutting it out, you put the Mod Podge on this side and you make sure it has a lot of Mod Podge on it. And then you take out your cutout piece of paper and you put it on top and you smooth it out like this one, like I did with this one. Uh, there you go. You can see. And you open it up. So I still got to do the front, but I saved that to show you guys. So Ashton and Elena cut theirs out. Smells like carrots. And you're going to want to make sure it looks like this, guys. And you're going to want to put my, when you're done putting Mod Podge on your cigar box, you're going to want to put it on the back of the paper, too. And not only the back, but when you set it on top of the cigar box, you're going to want to add more on top. So, depending on how big your box is, we will set two pieces of design paper with your box just in case um, there's not enough because as you can see, some boxes are this size, some boxes are this size, some boxes are their size. And I have like one, I have the front to do on mine. So the high school play is coming up soon, guys. Yeah. yeah. So this year we're doing Mutually Assured Destruction, and Ash and I both got a part in it. Well, wow. we'll be performing together. Heck yeah. Is your match pad over it too? Uh, uh, yes, oh, match okay. pad over it as well. And so 
Can you guys tell us a little bit about this play, or? Um, <clears throat> well, this year, the play is about, it's kind of like last year's, where there's two people on the stage at once doing a skit, and it is about um, brothers and sisters in different eras of time. So, for example, Ash and I are both from the 1958, Whoa. and it goes from, I think, 1920s all the way to 2005. 2015 even. So, it's just about brothers and sisters arguing or having little moments. That sounds so interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see this play. Yeah, it's actually, so the inspiration was the Cold War, actually. And uh, so, it was against us and the Soviet Union, and we're like, ah. We have big bombs, so let's just threaten people with them for fun. So, and it's they were like siblings bickering. It's not like they're actually going to do it, but, you know. It's a metaphor, huh? Yeah, so, and if they did, it would be mutually assured destruction, because it would be destroying each other. Mm. So that's like the basis. Oh, yes, and once you put... Can I use yours as an example? Once you put your paper on and your Mod Podge on it, you're going to want to let it dry a little bit, but I think you'll be able to do some measuring, but see how Elena has her box open like that? You want to kind of keep your box open too, like that, so it doesn't dry your lid shut. If you guys have Mod Podge before, um, it's pretty easy. And if you have extra paper lying around your house, you could probably do the inside of your box. So these boxes can be used for anything. Hair ties, trinkets, money. If you have awards, basically anything. You could keep your extra chargers or phone stuff Man. in the box. <laughs> Two scissors. <laughs> there is a lot of med like. A lot of measuring to be precise, though. And your fingers will get sticky. Because you want to make sure you have no wrinkles in your paper so it doesn't dry funky. But that's, that's art for you. even but all right this box is done so doesn't look like a cigar box anymore does it and this size box only took one sheet of paper and uh, you can paint the inside if you'd like to as well. And you can, um, there's no wrong way to cut your scrapbook design paper. Um, there's like no right way, just cut it however you feel comfortable. So, like, we measured the front. And we measured the sides. I didn't do the bottom, but if you have extra paper laying around, you can, but nobody's going to see the bottom anyway. But so call us up at the Wilmington Public Library and ask us, um, or, well, uh, say, hey, I would really like that teen cigar craft. And um, we'll have 
several different designs laid out and they'll be numbered like number one, number two, and you could call us up and you could be like, uh, yes, uh, Mrs. Snuffenfiver wants a cigar box and I would like the design number three. And that's another thing. We love all your comments on Facebook underneath our videos and our crafts. But don't ask for the craft on Facebook because we get super busy and we're not always checking um, who wants a craft. So you'll have, you'll get a hold of us a lot quicker if you call us up and give us your name and ask us which one you would like. But we still like your comments. In fact, speaking about comments, nobody left a comment about our books that we talked about last week. So, I figured while these guys are painting or doing a towel. No, I can scraps. Um, while these guys are finishing their Mod Podge, I'll read a bit from the book. And I'm going to get paper towels. Oh, Lena, what's your favorite kind of books? Is it thriller, romance? Um, I like scary books the best. Like horror books, like Stephen King. <gasps> We're going to be talking about Stephen King in October. Mm -hmm. So you guys better know you're Stephen King because uh, spooky season is coming and we can't wait. <laughs> I know, so you should be here for when we talk about Stephen King. All right, let's turn down the music a little bit so I can read to you. The Lost Hero. We'll read, I'll read a couple of these pages, maybe get you guys interested a little bit so we can have a book discussion about it. The Lost Hero by Rick Wooden. Jason. Even before he got electrocuted, Jason was having a rotten day. He woke in the back seat of a school bus, not sure where he was, holding hands with a girl he didn't know. That wasn't necessarily the rotten part. The girl was cute. But he couldn't figure out who she was or what he was doing there. He sat up, rubbed his eyes, trying to think. A few dozen kids sprawled in the seats in front of him, listening to iPods, talking or sleeping. They all looked around his age. Fifteen? Sixteen? Okay. That was scary. He didn't know his own age. The bus rumbled along a bumpy road. Out the window, out the windows, deserts rolled under a bright blue sky. Jason was pretty sure he didn't live in the desert. He tried to think back. The last thing he remembered the girl squeezed his hand. Jason, are you okay? She wore faded jeans, hiking boots, and a fleece snowboarding jacket. Her chocolate brown hair was cut choppy and uneven with the thin strands braided down the sides. She wore no makeup, like she was trying not to draw attention to herself, but it didn't work. She was seriously pretty. 
Her eyes seem to change color like a kaleidoscope. Brown, blue, green. Jason, let go of her hand. Um, I don't... In front of the bus, a teacher shouted, All right, cupcakes, listen up. The guy was obviously a coach. His bat baseball cap was pulled low over his hair. So you could just see his beady eyes. He had a wispy goatee and a sour face, like he'd eaten something moldy. His buff arms and chest pushed against a bright orange polo shirt. His nylon workout pants and Nikes were spotless white. A whistle hung from his neck, and a megaphone was clipped to his belt. He would have looked pretty scary if he hadn't had been five feet zero when he stood up in the aisle. One of the students called out, Stand up, Coach Hedge! I heard that, the coach scanned the bus for the offender. Then his eyes fixed on Jason and his scowl deepened. A jolt went down Jason's spine. He was sure the coach knew he didn't belong there. He was going to call Jason out, demand to know what he was doing on this bus. And Jason wouldn't have a clue what to say. But Coach Head looked away and cleared his throat. <clears> throat> We'll arrive in five minutes. Stay with your partner. Don't lose your worksheet. And if any of you precious little cupcakes cause any trouble on this trip, I personally send you back to campus the hard way. He picked up the baseball bat and made like he was hitting a homer. Jason looked at the girl next to him. Can he talk to us that way? She shrugged. Always does. This is the wilderness school where kids are the animals. She said it like it was a joke they'd shared before. This is some kind of mistake, Jason said. I'm not supposed to be here. The boy in front of him turned and laughed. Yeah, right, Jason. We've all been framed. I didn't run away six times. Piper didn't steal a BMW. The girl blushed. Didn't steal that car, Leo. Oh, I forgot, Piper. What was your story? You talked the dealer into lending it to you? He raised his eyebrows at Jason. Like, can you believe her? Leo looked like a Latin satin Latin satin wow Santa's elf with curly black hair, pointy ears, a cheerful babyish face, and a mischievous smile that told you right away this guy should not be trusted around matches or sharp objects. His long, nimble fingers wouldn't stop moving, drumming on the seat, sweeping his hair behind his ears, fiddling with the buttons of his army petite jacket. Either the kid was naturally hyper, or he was hopped up on enough sugar and caffeine to give a heart attack to a water buffalo. Anyway, Leo said, I hope you've got your worksheet, because I used mine for spit wads days ago. Why are you looking at me like that? Somebody draw on my face again? I don't know you, Jason said. And that should keep you in suspense to want to get this book, The Lost Hero. What do you guys think? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I read it. It was it was different, but it was good. Mm-hmm. While traveling 
into this book, you will get to know a lot of gods and goddesses and demigods and all kind of fun things like that. I think you guys should call us up at the Wilmington Public Library to see if we have those books. You guys all done? Can I show? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is Ashton's. Oh, you didn't do the front. I wasn't able to. I'll get that front. Yeah, I don't think I was able to get the front. Anymore. Yeah, they haven't done the front yet because they have to keep it like this to dry. Remember, when it's drying, keep it like this. It has to take a few hours to fully dry. But this is pretty cool. You see the lens. This is very moist. That's good because it'll stay. Ooh, this one's really pretty. Look at this one. You guys can use these trinket boxes for anything. See how pretty that is? Thank you. Now, remember, call us up at the Wilmington Public Library and get your cigar box today with your design paper. And like I said, Oh, and may, and you'll get a vial of Mod Podge with your box and your paper. Um, but make sure you guys have brushes at home to do this project. Preferably sponges. Yeah, preferably sponges and some paper towels because your fingers get sticky. But we'll run through it one more time. So make sure this paper is all measured out and it's blank on the back side so you can use a pencil so you can cut it out with your scissors. When it's all measured out, put the Mod Podge on this, put it on your paper, then put it on top. And make sure you smooth it out so it doesn't get bubbly. Alright, besides the play talk and our craft and our book talk, I think we're done. Yeah. And I, we didn't really practice on our goodbyes this time, but we can craft you later. <laughs> or anybody else have anything? Make like a box and let's close this up. Avita <laughs> said. Thank you, Elena, for joining us with Crafting with Teens, and I hope you come again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.